Okay, so problem number five is the smallest multiple problem. And if we just take a look at this, what it says is that 2520 is the smallest number that can be divided by each number from 1 to 10 without any remainder. And what we need to do here is say, what is the smallest positive number that is evenly divisible by all numbers from 1 to n? And I think what they mean by evenly divisible is, let's just have a look. Evenly divisible basically means that it leaves no remainder, so we can divide it properly, basically. And we want to make sure that we find the first number from any given number n up to any given number n that it's evenly divisible by all, all of those values. So the function name right here is called smallest mult, so that's what we're going to be implementing. And remember that n in this case, I guess, is the if we it needs to be divisible by all numbers from 1 to n. So n is the largest divisor that we're going to have. So I'm just going to call this largest divisor. And in terms of testing, I'm just going to have something like console.log result is smallest mult. And we're going to have, I guess, we're going to start off with 5 right here. Okay, so now we're ready to get started, and the first clue right here, it says, it says find the smallest positive number. So essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be trying to find a solution, and then we're going to return that solution at the end. So what I'm going to do here is say let solution, and it, by default um, it's going to be undefined. And at the end, I'm just going to return solution. And at some point during this M process, we'll find the solution and we'll set the variable correctly. But um, for now, it should def uh, return undefined. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so the strategy that we're just going to be using here is basically um, we're going to start off. Remember that if we had. Um, if n was 20, for example, and we had to find the smallest positive number that's divisible by all numbers between uh, 1 and 20, um, uh, the smallest of that number can be is 20, because for it to be divisible by 20, um, it has to be at least 20 or greater. So we know that the number will be at least n right here. So what we're going to have is we're going to have um, a potential solution. And we're going to start that off at the largest divisor, or n in this case. That's our potential solution. And what we're essentially going to do is we're going to try dividing that by all numbers from 1 to n. And if it doesn't divide by one of those, then we'll move on, we'll increase this potential solution by 1. And then we'll try dividing that value, and then we'll try dividing the value after that, and so on and so on, until we find one that manages to divide successfully between um, one, all the numbers between 1 and n. So that's what we're going to be doing. And I'm also going to have a variable called unsolved, and I'm going to set this to true. And unsolved is basically um, in order to execute a while loop and to stop that while loop once we've found a solution. So what we want to do is we want to execute this while loop while this is unsolved like this. And what I'm going to be doing is uh, I'm going to try dividing the, the potential solution by all the values between uh, 1 and this largest divisor or n each time. So what I'm going to say here is I'm going to say let current divisor and I'm going to say for um, current divisor equals 1 to current divisor is less than or equal to largest divisor. So we want to try dividing by all the numbers from 1 to the largest divisor or n and we want to make sure that we increase the current divisor by 1 each time. And what we want to do in here is basically we want to say if um, potential solution percentage current divisor is not equal to 0, we want to just break out of this. So this is basically Again, we'll try dividing the potential solution between all values between 1 and the largest divisor that we took in right here. And if one of those um, produces a remainder, if we try and divide it, so this just divides and figures out what the remainder is. If one of those produces the remainder, we can just break out of this for loop. And what we can do once we've broken out is we can try we can try um, ch increasing the potential value or the potential solution by 1. 
So again, what th this will do is for each potential solution, and we'll start this off with whatever this largest divisor was. We'll try dividing it by all values between one and the largest divisor. If one of those produces a remainder, we'll break out of it, we'll increase the potential solution to the next value, and then we'll try dividing again. And um, eventually, um, at some point, this for loop will execute fully and it won't break. And what we'll essentially want to do is we want to be able to return the solution. And the way we know that we finished by dividing all the values is remember that when this for loop is completely finished executing, this current divisor will be equal to the largest divisor. So what we want to do here is say if current divisor is equal to largest divisor, so this means that we successfully managed to divide by every number between one and the largest divisor. So if this is the case, then we have found a solution and this potential solution is a solution. So we can just say solution equals potential solution. And we want to make sure that we set unsolved to be false because now that we found a solution, we want to stop executing this loop. And again, this loop will only execute if unsolved is true. And at the end again, we're going to be returning our solution. So let's try this out um, and we're going to try it out with 5 to start off with and for 5 it should return 60. So let's try this. And no, it has returned 12. Okay, so I just realized what was happening. It's because when it comes to 12, 12 divides successfully by 4. Remember we're dividing from all numbers from 1 to 5 and it doesn't divide successfully by 5 and it breaks out of here but the current divisor which is 5 is still equal to the largest divisor which is 5 which is why this part runs right here and that 12 gets returned. So what we need to do is just basically implement one more check into here and we just want to put this um, check in here as well. Or another thing we can actually do here is we can basically move um, this part inside this. Like this. So this will this part will only run if it managed to divide successfully. So let's try running this again and we can see that we get 60. Again, what's hap what happened was because it, d it didn't divide by 5 and it broke out, but the uh, current divisor and the largest divisor were still the same, so it returned that solution. But now this will only return the solution if we manage to divide by the last, num the last divisor or the largest divisor or n as well. So that's why this works now. Um, let's try with the remaining values. So with 7, we should get back 420. So if I save that and run this, we can see 420 gets returned. For 10, it should be 2520. So let's try it with 10, 2520. And let's try it with 13, which is 360, 360. So let's do that here. 360, 360. And finally, we have 20. So let's try that. And that should be like two three two seven nine two five sixty, and it takes a bit more time as we can see with twenty, but it does get to two three two seven nine two five sixty. So yeah, that should be working right there. So again, what this solution does is we basically start off our potential solution with whatever the largest divisor or n that we took in and we have this unsolved variable that's set to true and then what we'll do is we'll try dividing that value by all the numbers between one and the largest divisor that we need or n and if one of those um, fails then we'll break out and then we'll try with we'll move on our potential solution to the next number and continue dividing from there and um, and in the end, if we manage to reach the last number, so if we manage to divide successfully by the current divisor, when the current divisor is equal to the largest divisor, then what we'll have here is we'll set our solution to the potential solution that we currently have. We'll set unsolved equals false to prevent this loop from running anymore. And then we'll return our solution right here. So that's exactly how this method works. And again, if you have any questions or something, just leave a comment and I'll get back to it. And if we save that now, um, and then we go ahead and run these tests, don't worry about the potential infinite loop, um, it will work out eventually. We might have to reset it though. And while that's loading, I'm going to try it with this. So this is from 1 to 20, and we ran it with 20, and we had our answer right here. 
So I'm going to go ahead and check this answer and this might take a while as well but as you can see this one's finished successfully it just took some time to do it and we do have a working solution which we can go ahead and submit and if we check our official answer right here we can see that it's also correct so we've basically solved the um, smallest multiple problem right there